Strangest thing ever did see, old partner. Looks like we've rolled right straight into Santa Claus' private pasture. Reach for the sky, stranger. Get down off of that horse. Would you be the reception committee? you're one of them wrestlers who've been giving my sister so much trouble. Don't move, Becker. I got you covered. <clears throat> Good work, Jerry. This is the best piece of work I've done since... Back in 67. Yeah, back in... Si huh? Well, Tex Yancey, what? Uh, but what in tarnation are you doing in Elk Valley? For a minute, I thought you was Red Becker. Say, you ain't one of his gang, are you? Red Becker's gang? Why, Missouri, you old flea-bit coyote. You don't think of taking up rustling and stealing, do you? No, of course not. But chasing them rustlers on the dog dog tennis racket has got me plumb low to them. I ain't seen such weather as this since back in 67 when I was mayor of Dodge City. Yes, sir, the snow was 40 feet deep. And you was running around in your bare feet. Yeah, I was running around in my bare feet. Oh, I was not. Then he ain't a ruster, Sheriff. Who, him? Why, but, Jerry, you remember me telling you about my old partner, Tex Yancey? You mean the fellow who captured eight bandits all by himself, and the fellow who bulldogged two steers at once, and the fellow who shot the teeth out of a rattlesnake when he was striking at you, and the fellow? Yep, that's him. That's him in the flesh and bleed. <laughs> oh, Tex, get acquainted with Jerry Parker, the greatest little deputy that ever rode law in Elk Valley. Well, I'm glad to know you, Jerry. Gosh, Tex. Oh, willikers. <laughs> you see, Tex, this Becker gang is pretty foxy. By stampeding the elk, they break a trail for the stolen cattle to get through. And if anybody gets in their way... Well, can't you get the jump on them? Yep, I think so. My posse's ambushed outside the Parker Ranch right now. We're trying to catch the Becker gang red-handed. Well, Marty, the boy's all ready for the stampede. Yeah, but I'm telling you one thing, Becker. We better lay low for a while. Killing that sheriff and his posse's got the whole countryside up in arms. This is a bad time for rustling. Now, listen, I'm running this show. You haven't gotten into trouble yet, have you? We Not yet, if that's what you mean. And there's a lot of talk going around about the federal government taking things over. Now, that won't make any difference. When we get the parking of the McClellan herd, we'll hightail for Texas. Now, we'll start the elk stampeding and drive the cattle over their trail. We ought to be able to clear a thousand head of steers easy. Same as on the Rawdon job. Come on.
have everything in front of them. Things will be easy from now on. Get those cattle moving! <laughs> That's the moon we've been waiting for. I'd give the posse the signal. Let's go, men. The sheriff's men, head for cover. Missouri. We'll be safe now. Sis, you all right? Yes, of course. Missouri, I'm glad you saw this. Now you know what I've been talking about. You've got to do something. Well, Miss Candy, we were trying, but Vector outsmarted us. I'm sorry. And I'm grateful to you for saving my life, Mr. Uh, the name is Tex Yancey. Thank you, Tex. I never enjoyed a sudden job so much before. And ma'am, and I got here as soon as I could. Why didn't you run that fence across the canyon entrance as I told you to? Well, I was going to, but... Uh... There are no buts about it. That fence not being up today nearly cost me my life. I'm sorry, Blackie, but you're through. Why, I've been your foreman for a long time, ma'am. That's the trouble, and you've never carried out any of my orders. That's final, Blackie. Be at the ranch and get your pay. The 
Looks like you had to find a new foreman, ma'am. A good man's not easy to find. <laughs> he is found. I hereby nominate for the job of foreman of the Parker Ranch that right honorable gentleman and rootin' tootin' cowpuncher, my good friend, Tech Chansey. Second the motion. Well, a job is the thing I need most, Miss Candy, not praise. I'll do the best I can for you. Well, it pays 60 a month and keep. You can start day after tomorrow. Well, I can start tomorrow if you need me. <laughs> Tomorrow's Christmas. Christ so it is. Well, I guess there is a Santa Claus. Thank you very much, ma'am, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Tex. We'll fix up your sleigh, Miss Candy, and round up your team. Why didn't you keep an eye on the sheriff like I told you to? He upset our whole plan. Why did you start those elk running before I got there? They almost ran over the girl. They what? Yeah, the Parker girl had been trampled to death if a stranger hadn't come along. So she blames the whole business on me and tells me to get my time. Your job on the Parker ranch gave us a line on the whole valley. She's got to take you back. It's too late. She gave the job to the stranger who did the rescue act. Well, then we'd better get rid of the stranger. You're right, Becker. You sure are making things look mighty pretty. <laughs> Sheriff, you got to settle it. Which one of us looks most like Santa Claus? <laughs> you see, Tex, the Santa Claus is pretty busy hereabouts. So he leaves Jerry's presents early, and we take over for him and play his part. <laughs> well, it looks like to me that Santa Claus's mother had twins. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> <laughs> But the question is, who's going to play Santa Claus? Well, uh, far be it for me to make any decisions, but, uh... Say, maybe the lady could help us out. Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tex, I reckon you'll have to do the judging. Come on over here. Boys, let my old friend Tex Yancey make the selection. Well, how do I look? I look pretty good. Who ever heard of a red-headed Santa Claus? Who ever heard of a skinny one? Now, just a minute, boys. Let's don't argue about it. See, I wonder if you'd mind if I'd uh, postpone the judging until I get a bite to eat. Sure. Go on, Sure. Santa Claus, Tex, we've talked the whole thing over and we got the problem solved. Yeah? Yep. Now, if anybody else around here were to play Santa Claus, Jerry would spot him right away. So you're going to be Santa Claus. Me? Yep. Now, listen. You go out to Candy Parker's ranch after dark and pick up her Santa Claus outfit and be back here promptly at 9 o'clock. Well, that's a little different from riding herd, I don't... Oh, you get used to it. Come on. All right, boys, line up. Let Tex make his choice of the whiskers. Well, now, these look like the real thing. Ouch! They are the real thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you know, that's good. Nobody'd know you in that outfit. <laughs> and what do you want Santa Claus to bring you for Christmas? You know. That payroll at the Parker Ranch. And that's just what Santa Claus is going to bring you. And if anybody sees me, that Tex fella's going to have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> hey, Jerry, move over and let old Limpy look. You know, I got to look pretty, too. 
Say, do you know what I'm cooking you for dinner tomorrow? A nice big fat turkey. That's fine. <laughs> my, my, how sweet we look, Miss Candy. I'll be ready in just a minute, Miss. Oh, boy, we're going to see Santa Claus. Uh -huh. Limpy, I've changed my mind. I'm going to send you into town with Jerry. Well, why, Mom? Well, I'm worried about the payroll. Oh, now, don't you worry about the payroll. I'll stay here and take care of everything. You and Jerry go on into town. Have your fun. Besides, I gotta get up early in the morning and cook breakfast for the boys. Oh, no, Limpy, you don't have to stay. You know, maybe, Mom, if I'm here all to myself, old Sandy will drop by and say, Howdy, Limpy. <laughs> Limpy, you're a darling. Come on, Jerry, fix you up here. Well, folks, it seems that Santa Claus overslept. And while we're waiting for him, our visitors from Canada, the Northwesterners, will play another tune for us. That good old cowboy song, Going Back to Texas. All right. <laughs> Sure. 
of Missouri. <laughs> this is for whiskers. <laughs> Get some here for Bob, Bob. Son, Merry Christmas. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, oh, this is for Hilda. Merry Christmas. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Santa, uh, th thank you. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Gee, gosh, this is swell. <laughs> Miss Candy Parker. Merry Christmas. Oh, boy. Gee, thanks, Santa. Oh, Lippy. Lippy, what happened? What happened, Lippy? They robbed the ranch, Miss Candy. Shot me. Got the payroll. Hey, who shot you? What do you look like? He had long white whiskers. Him. Him. Where was he? He was late getting here. That fellow's a stranger here. How do we know? Lippy named the man that shot him, and there he is. Wait. Believe me, Missouri. I didn't do it. I believe you, son. But making these other fellows believe it is something else again. They've had about all the crime they can stand far from Red Beckoner's gang. Something's bound to pop. Now, you keep quiet and let me handle this. He shot Limpy down in cold blood. We've got a cure for that. We've had enough law breaking around here. It's time we set an example. Let's take him now. Then we are. I didn't shoot this fella. Just a minute. I'm sheriff sure here. And I hereby arrest this man for the murder of Limpy Watkins. Give me that gun, Tex. You. I didn't do it, ma'am. But he said you did. Makes no difference now what kind of flowers made hands me. I'll get along without you now, that's plain to see. I don't care what happens next, for I'll get by somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. It was just a year ago when I first met you. I learned to love you, and I thought you'd love me too. But that's all in the past, and I'll forget somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. Now that we have really parted, I can't believe we're through. I don't blame myself, I'm sure I can't blame you. There was something had to happen, and it happened somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. After all is said and done, I'll soon forget you. Although I know that it will be so hard to do. Let things happen as they will, and I'll get by somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. You know, life sure is funny, Missouri. And one day, I get me a job, and I meet the prettiest girl I ever did see. Next day, I'm in jail, charged with murder. But, Tex, if I hadn't put you in this here jail, they'd have yanked off your necktie and put on a rope instead. Well, I reckon. 
And this is Christmas. Robbing and killing on Christmas Eve. There's been too much of that around here. You missed your chance of doing something about it last night. Well, it ain't too late now. We'll break the jail doors down. If the sheriff interferes with justice, it'll be just too bad. We'll get a committee organized. Jim, get your rope. Come on, boys. Well, looks like the only way I can clear myself of this murder charge is to go out and bring in the man that really done it. The same being Mr. Red Becker or one of his men. Yeah. But the sad part is, Red Becker is Miss Candy's father. What? You mean that murdering cow thief is the girl's father? Yep. I'd sure hate to have to bring him in alive and have her find out. She thinks the Paul's dead. I can't believe it. It's a fact. Time there was law and order in this town. Lynch mob. Before she believes in me, I've got to go out and bring him in. Gee, Willikers. We'll string him up. That'll teach him. And this is a good time to start. What is it? I hope it ain't what I think it is. I ain't gonna let them have you, Tex. There's a law in this here town, and I'm gonna see that them mavericks keep it. You can't keep them from coming in Missouri. Yes, I can. I'll shoot. Oh, my gosh. Where'd I put my gun? You can't hold them off. Oh, I can manage them. Here, what's the idea? You know, I had to do this, Missouri. If I don't leave this jail now, your friends out there will see that I never leave it. Oh, with it, you can't do this to me. Gosh. What made up the town? You know, Ms. Roy, if once them cow waddies got inside that door, you couldn't protect me or anybody else. I'm going to leave you here tied up. And that'll explain everything. Open up. We want that color. Well, you won't have long to wait. They're almost through the door now. I'm gonna go get the man that killed Limpy. So long. Yeah, but you can't get out. What? Because I ain't gonna tell you where the key to the back door is here in my vest pocket. The other side. Thanks. Hey. place. And I was getting the best of him until he hit me over the head with an iron bar. Where's the bar? Hey, he, he, who? Oh, he took it with him. Hey, there he goes. Get in your gun. Come on, boy.
Well, you sure got him. I say I did. Well, we might as well go on back home, fellas. Justice has been done. Let's go down and investigate. No, wait a minute. I'll do that myself. Now, you boys go on back home. Well, all right. Escaped. Well, I did leave town in kind of a hurry. Tex Yancey, did you kill Limpy? No, I didn't. And before I'm through, I'll prove it to you. I hope so. Here, take these. You'll need them. Thank you. Where will you go? I'm joining up with Red Becker. Red Becker? I might have thought so. For a moment, you almost had me believing you. Now you're going to join up with the worst outlaw in all Wyoming. That fella is her father. Is that a human or an elk? What do you mean, elk? That's a human, all right. He's traveling on snowshoes. Now he'll be an easy shot. Wait. Let's see what he wants up here. Now, just keep your hands where I can see them, and we'll have us a little talk. All right with me. You know, it ain't healthy for strangers to come up here. Who are you? Folks know me as Tex Yancey. Oh, you must be the fellow that broke jail. That's right, mister. I wouldn't be talking to Red Becker, would I? You guessed it. What are you doing up here? Oh, just a little matter of a sheriff's posse keeping me on the run. Well, maybe you won't have to run any further. Come on up to the cabin, we'll talk it over. You know, I got things right in the palm of my hand, Tex. That gal down on the Parker Ranch, she's got a thousand head of prime steers. There's a fellow on the other side of the range who'll give me $45 I had for him delivered at the railroad pen. Rustling a thousand head of cattle is quite a job. Don't this fellow figure he's taking an awful chance? Nobody ain't taking any chances. I own the Parker brand. Got papers to prove it. Pretty good, huh? Well, you can't be arrested for stealing what belongs to you. No, that's right. But we've got a couple of jobs to do first that might cause a little trouble. Well, if everything is legal like, how come you need me? Because I need men that can shoot. Forty-five thousand dollars is worth a little shooting, ain't it, Tex? Well, I reckon. I suppose that counts for this hideaway. Yeah. It's none of my business, of course, but... Uh, uh, how do you fellas get in and out of here when the snow's too deep to use horses? Same way you came in. Snowshoes. The rest of the boys and the horses are stabled down in the valley. Oh. Hey, you ain't figuring on leaving, are you? Oh, no, no. No, I like it here. It's warm. And I sure hate crowds. <laughs> well, she fell for it. I'm riding with a Parker outfit again. What's he doing here? Well, he's working with us. See, I needed more men for the big job. A couple of days ago, him and the sheriff seemed to be pals. And yesterday, Tex tied up his pal, broke jail, and hit leather with the whole town following him. 
friends, huh? Say, he's all right. We'll move the McClellan herd of prize yearlings through Wapiti Pass to our hideout near the railroad. Then we'll start collecting. Looks like a snowstorm coming. That trail those elk made for you will be filled up again by morning. Then that's right. We better get moving fast. Any time you say. Now get the McClellan cattle moving, then hit the Parker herd. We got the boys waiting? They're ready to ride. Okay. Now, Tex, your job will be to keep folks out of our way and use this shooting iron where it'll do the most good. I'll remember to do just that. All right, boys, come on, hurry it up. Blackie, you take Tex with you. All right, all right, Tex, get going. And if it'll make you feel any better, keep your eye on him. I will. Save you. Save me? Well, yeah. I saw him aiming at you, so I took a shot at him. But I missed. Well, how'd you make out? We got the cattle moving all right. Good work. I'd like to talk to you private. All right. You boys go on inside. What's on your mind? It's that fella Yancey. Yancey? What's the matter with him? He acted mighty suspicious like. I had to drop on old man McClellan. Before I could let him have it, Yancey fired a shot over McClellan's head and warned him. Well, did you ask him about it? Yeah. What did he say? Uh, some alibi about protecting me. But I don't believe it. Well, it can't be so bad he came back with you. No. Well, I was watching to see if he'd act out of line again. If he had, you'd have got it. Old Cactus Pete thought he could beat most anyone in Oh, town. what you need to drink. He was so rough and pretty tough, he shot the sheriff down. And one day, rustling on the pass, he made his final bow. A piece of lead went through his head, and he looked so peaceful now. Now it's a fact, old Grizzly Mac cut notches on his gun. Each time he'd kill, he'd get a thrill and notch another one. A quicker man than him appeared and called his bluff somehow. Old Mac was slow and we all know that he looks so peaceful now. Now Trigger Dan mapped out a plan to stick a bull bar X. Against their will, he robbed the till, took money and some checks. He tried it in another place, but then he failed somehow. He's out of luck, forgot to duck, and he looks so peaceful now. Red McAvoy was quite a boy, a terror you must know. Until he blew right straight into a cabin in the snow. He met his equal then and there and found his doom somehow. Crime doesn't pay, I'm here to say that he looks so peaceful now. What's the idea of that song? Oh, just something I like. Well, I don't like it. Well, just as you say, Becker. I don't like that either. Instead of pecking on that thing, how about a game of cards? 
suits me. In the middle drawer, get him and we'll play. If a fellow was to wear these, he'd look just like Santa Claus, wouldn't he? Yeah, he sure would. That's what a Blackie's play print is. Show him how you look wearing it, Blackie. You know too much. Well, I'd say that I know just enough. Save them bullets. I need both of you fellows. Now take off those shooting irons and put them here on the table. I'll keep mine. I got things to do. I'll be seeing you. Sit down. Rifflin. What are you doing? Just stomping on a spider. I hate him. Don't you ever kill a spider. That's poison bad luck. Say, do you believe in them things? Like killing spiders being bad luck? Turning a dead snake's belly up to the sun to make it rain? Rabbit's feet and walking under ladders and all that? I sure do. I never saw those things fail. Hell now. Maybe this would help pass the time away. You know, I never did take much stock in it, but folks always claimed that I had a gift for telling fortune with cards. Well, maybe you could tell mine. Maybe. You see, the, uh, the middle card always tells the tale. Want me to turn it up? Go ahead. The ace of spades. Well, that's right. Would seem like, Mr. Becker, that at one time or other you, you killed a man. Huh? It means that? It just means I've done some killing. It don't mean that I'm gonna get killed. Not exactly. Oh. Sure, I've killed some men in my time. Fair fighting, mind you. But once in war as I killed a fellow named Wilcox. Barney Wilcox, his name was. Government man. Fast on the draw, but not fast enough. Only he didn't die. He lived. How do you know? I met up with Wilcox in Cheyenne. Told me all about it. How he was trailing some fella that had shot him in the back. What do you mean? He was quite a gunman, Wilcox was. Superstitious too, like you. But he always sent a warning. A last warning. Sort of like the buzzing of a rattler just before he strikes. A warning? The ace of spades. How does he send it? Well, if you ever find this old black ace someplace where you don't expect to find it, look out. Yeah? You're a friend of Wilcox. He sent you here to get me. But you're not going to look because I'm going to get you first. Listen, Becker. I came up here on snowshoes without even a gun on me after breaking jail down in Elk Valley. 
Now you figure it out for yourself. All right. Let's forget it. I caught this brat coming up the trail, so I had to bring him back. Well, what are we going to do with him? I've got it. There's a blizzard coming. That'll take care of everything for us. When we hit the trail, we'll leave him here. You can't do that. He'll freeze to death in this cabin. I'm giving orders around here, and you'll do as I say. It's too late to start now. We'll head out the first thing in the morning. You say the Parker cattle is still bunched in the North Range? Yeah. Good. It was weird. Oh, I'm sure he's all right. Maybe he's helping the boys round up some of the strays. No, nobody's seen him around the ranch. Mm. I wonder if he decided to trail Blackie. See, maybe he did. You know, Jerry's got a lot of nerve. Just like I was his age back in 67. Sheriff. Say, you look like you'd seen a ghost, Mr. McClellan. What's the matter? Plenty. Rustlers. Where, your place? Well, I recognize two of them. Blackie and that new foreman of yours, Miss Tandy, Tex Yancey. Oh, that can't be. Saw him with my own eyes. That Tex took a shot at me, but missed. They rustled off all my prize yearlings and shot two of my men. Say, this is serious. I'll get a posse together right away. Now you cut them three times. What are you doing? Well, I'm getting my fortune told. Ace of spades. Cards. I'm sick of fortunes. What makes you so jittery, Becker? That shutter. I'll tear it off. Give me your gun. I'm not afraid. I'll shoot it out with him. I'll shoot it out, sure. He's after me. Come on now, Wilcox. I'm not afraid of you. Come on. Come on, Wilcox. Where are you? Show yourself. Come on, Wilcox. Come on. Why, he's Groco. Come on out, Will Cox, and fight like a man! Where are you? Well, he's through. There's one hombre that old man conscience really killed. Well, Becker's through. And that's gonna make a big change around here. I'm taking over now. Yeah, but what are we gonna do? First we go to the Parker Ranch, pick up the girl. Then we go to the bank and clean that out. And then we're on our way. Now you're talking. Sounds like a pretty good day's work. Yeah. Only you ain't going. And neither's a kid. I never did trust you, Tex Yancey. You and your death card trick. We're gonna tie you up and leave you here. The blizzard and wolves will take care of the rest. You got it all figured out, ain't you? Stop him.
Salmon, get a rope and tie him up. I ain't taking any chances. Money, get a rope or tie the kid up too, and let's get going. I don't like the idea of leaving the kid here to die. It ain't our fault if they freeze to death. Can we help it if a blizzard comes up? Come on. Take it easy, Jerry. This rope hurts. Tex, what we gonna do? Them fellas are gonna carry away candy and rob the bank. Well, it sure looks like winter spot, son. It's getting cold. We're gonna have to leave here in a hurry, son. They got a big head start on us. I figured that I'd have to leave here in a hurry someday. That's the way we're gonna leave in a big hurry. You're cold, ain't you, son? Yes, Tex. Put on your hat and coat. I'll be with you in a minute. Downhill all the way, son. This thing ought to work. It's just got to work. Say, ain't that Hanson's ranch at the bottom of the hill? Yes. Good. When we get there, we can get horses. You ride into town and get the sheriff, and I'll try to head him off at your sister's ranch. Come on, Jerry.
want, Blackie? Howdy, ma'am. Who are those men? Some friends of mine. Well, I don't like you, and I don't like your friends. Now get out. You'll like my friends when you get to know them. I said get out. Sure, we'll get out. All of us. And that includes you. But first, I got something to tell you. Something you should know about. You know who your old man was. Who's that? I don't know. Silent, cover the back door. Fellows weren't bothering you none, were they? Oh, Tex, you got here just in time. He didn't say anything or, or tell you anything that didn't make sense, did he? Why, why no. Well, that's good. I don't reckon you will. the sheriff of Texas. You can't let them catch you. Aren't you for killing Limpy? Oh, I know you didn't do it, but how can you prove it? There's the man that killed Limpy. Oh. Don't move, Becky. I got you covered. Huh? Oh, you got him, did you? Good. We rounded up them other Mavericks at the North Pass. There's the fellow that killed Limpy. I got the proof up in Becker's cabin, in a drawer. But what about Becker? He's up in the canyon, dead. Oh, you got him too, huh? No, Missouri, he got himself. He was just plain red Becker. And they got a paper here that proves it. This reminds me of the time back in 67, when I was town marshal over in Tombstone. Hot lead Harry, a bad and wicked bandit, came to town. And you ran him out again. Yeah. Who told you? You did. Sixteen times. But, come on, boys, get him out of here. <laughs> Come that summer 